Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Listen, we're gonna hop right in. Now, if you're new here, my name is Brandon. I'm an executive chef here in Silicon Valley. And basically, I am on a mission right now. We are in the mission to reinforce basic culinary knowledge. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, go click, the, after you watch this video, then go click on them. Every time I post content or I post videos, uh, sometimes the techniques are a little bit too advanced and I know that people are genuinely interested in, but they just don't understand. So what I'm doing here is my due diligence as a chef. In order to keep what I have, I have to pass it on. So we are doing basics of culinary. That is what this whole series is about. So if you are a new or upcoming chef or you're just getting started or you're in high school trying to pick a career and you want to dabble in cooking a little bit, listen, this is for you. Or if you're an avid home cook and you want to get better and you want to sharpen your knowledge, then this is for you. Today, we're going to talk about pots and pans. That's simple. Is there a one size fits all pan? Kind of not really. Like it's so subjective. I want to give you the knowledge you need to know to be able to make a decision for you in your situation. This video is going to be primarily most my opinion, but if you've seen the previous episodes, you know that I am following the ninth edition professional chef. The reason why I'm using this reference, and I'm gonna say this every single video because I don't want anybody to take anything out of context, is because this book has been known for years, especially in my field of the creme de la creme, right? This school is amazing. Their literature is amazing. It's a good reference that chefs have been using for years. Now, do I recommend you go pay $140,000 for the culinary degree or $100,000 for the culinary degree? No. What I do recommend is you either purchase this book or go down to the link in my bio. I have a PDF version printable for you. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So as you can see, we have plenty of pans to show you, but I'm gonna leave one out that I don't think I would advise the young cook to get, or it's good to have in your arsenal, but the thing is, is it just takes a lot to maintain, and that's copper. Copper pans, listen, as a chef, I love them. I just don't think they're ideal for a restaurant or at your home for that matter. They look beautiful, but there's a lot of maintenance that is required with a copper pan. The thing is, is they conduct heat very well. Pots made of copper transfer heat rapidly and evenly, but because direct contact with copper will affect the color and consistency of many foods, copper pots are genuinely lined. An exception is a copper pan used to cook jams, jellies, chocolates, and other high sugar items, often known as a preserving pan. Great care must be taken not to scratch the linings made of soft metals such as tin. If the lining becomes scratched or wears away, it may be repaired by retinning. Copper also tends to discolor quickly. Its proper upkeep requires significant time and labor. And this is true. I worked in a French restaurant where it took us literally, you know, an hour in the beginning of our week where we had to freaking polish the copper. And it, you know, it's so time consuming. And honestly, I love those pans, but I have a negative feeling about taking care of them. <laughs> First pot, right? This is a stock pot. Now this is very useful for soups, stocks, and a large amount of sauce, and also reheating big amounts of food, okay? This is called a stock pot. It has straight sides, heavy bottom. This is all clad. I recommend this brand if you want to invest. You know, All Clad is a very good, reputable brand. Obviously, there are cheaper alternatives that are equally as impressive. This is called a Rondo. Now, a Rondo is for a lot of applications. So as you can see, it's wide. Fairly shallow pot with two loop handles. This one is stainless steel, most commonly used for brazing. And honestly, they make these in square instead of round, which I think is kind of unique, but I, prefer this one. Again, this one is all clad. I highly recommend this brand, but you know, you don't have to spend that much money on an all clad pan. This is a sauce pot, flat bottom. Okay. Obviously straight sides. I love the sauce pot, especially for making sauces. I prefer a sauce pot that has this little lip. Okay. That is very important. The reason why I love the sauce pot with the lip is because when you go to pour it out, basically it doesn't come down the side of the pot. Okay, so they make sauce pots in all different shapes and sizes. You will need these in a restaurant. This is for sure top priority when you're in a restaurant. This one is called a sautois. It's also used as a fry pan, but it has flat bottom, straight sides. And as you can see, this one has the little lip built in as well. I love this one. You can make sauces, you can sear meats, you can do braises. This is a smaller version of a Rondo pretty much. But yes, very, very useful in a restaurant environment. So as you can see, straight sides. It has one long handle and usually another handle on the end over here. I think my favorite 
use for this pan is shallow frying. This is the best thing to use for shallow frying if you have a small amount to fry. If you wanna fry chicken, if you wanna fry a piece of fish, then the sautois is your best bet because you know you don't risk spilling any oil. This is called a saute pan. And I know that seems pretty generic, but that's what it's called. And basically this is what you'll find in most restaurants. It is highly common. This is basically made out of stainless steel. This is for your all purpose cooking. If you wanna make a pasta, sear a piece of meat, you can make a quick sauce. There's a ton of things you can do with a saute pan. They make them in different sizes. This is the smaller version of a saute pan. Again, I'm not plugging, but this is this is all clad. I highly recommend getting a brand that is reputable and that will last you forever. Invest in your saute pans. This is a non-stick saute pan. Now, I wanted to show the difference because if you can see the sloped edge here, the sloped edge, that is really important when it comes to sauteing things. The reason why I primarily use non-stick is because it's a wipe and go scenario, okay? Like with the saute pan, you have after you're finished using it, you have to scrub it and blah, blah, blah. And then plus you gotta clean the back. I barely clean the black back anymore, but with a non-stick pan, I recommend this for home use. I recommend this for a breakfast restaurant. If you're a private chef that has to clean the dishes, I would highly recommend nonstick. And for myself at my house, my wife and I use the nonstick primarily because you don't have to put as much fat as you would to use a saute pan. Do you need to use nonstick? No, but for me, the fact that usually when you cook whatever you can, you cook and you can just wipe it out and move on, that is more beneficial to me than anything else, right? Another big one that I wanna talk about is cast iron. Cast iron is probably the top three of my favorite to cook in. The reason is, is because it retains heat so well. Definitely when I'm doing open fire cooking, I love to use cast iron. Once you buy cast iron, you never have to buy another pan, right? You can have one cast iron pan that does everything for you, right? But here's the downside. One, cast iron needs to be seasoned. Seasoning preserves the cooking surface and it essentially creates a nonstick coating. Basically, I'm just gonna give you a rundown. To season a nonstick pan, you basically wanna pour an even coat of oil in the bottom, you know, about like a quarter of an inch or something and then place in a 300 degree oven and you know for about an hour and then you remove it and then re repeat the process as necessary but i think the thing that i want to drive home is is cast iron is heavy it's very heavy and a good example is I love my cast iron pans and I have tons of them, but my wife is not gonna use them. In a restaurant, yes, there are a few cast iron pans, but it's not as light and nimble as the saute pan, right? So I have never seen any kitchens that's decked out with cast iron. I will say that cast iron is cheap, right? You can get cast iron pans for less than $40, right? And they'll last you a lifetime, but they come with maintenance, they come with seasoning. They come with, you know, rusting very easily, right? So you have to take that consideration when you're choosing a pan. The honorable mention and the one I really wanted to take, I don't have one here, but it's actually a wok. I don't have one, but hey, trust me, it is so worth it. And another honorable mention is gonna be the steamer. I think a bamboo steamer is so underrated. It's not very prevalent in Western style cooking or American cooking, I should say, but I love steaming things. I think this is so underrated. And growing up as a chef, I really didn't learn how to use a steamer properly until I got later in my career. Basically with a wok, you can put the steamer right on and it'll seal properly, right? You could just as easily use a small saucepan or whatever kind of pan you could put water in and put it on snug. This video should give you a good basic of what you need to know before you choose your pan, right? I actually have nonstick pans at work because of the reason of just wiping it out. I can cook something really quick. At home, it's really easy when I make breakfast. I love nonstick pans, but that doesn't work for everybody and that's okay. Now, is that something I suggest for the brand new cook? No, but it's really up to you. And hopefully this video will give you some clarification on which type of pan you want to use. I wanna show some baking equipment or also some miscellaneous kitchen equipment that I think is really important. Now I am missing two things here, but it's totally fine. We're gonna get right into it. Muffin tins. Now I know this is pretty self-explanatory, but muffin tins, they make all shapes and sizes. Okay, this is to make muffins, small cakes, whatever you wanna do, portion control, you can make egg white bites, you can do whatever you want. This is called a muffin tin. This is a spring form pan. Now the reason why it's called spring form is because basically, what you do here is you have your pan, then you put parchment, you line it with whatever you want, but then what you do is you close it up here. So you push this just like this, boom, okay, it closes. You have your cake inside, and then when you bake your cake, you pull it out, and then 
you can release it and then it usually pops right up. This is a cake pan. And basically this is your most generic cake pan. This is for baking and pastry. And honestly, I think it's really important to know. Now, I will be honest, I don't use this type of cake pan ever. They make one that has an insert that can be removed way more user friendly, but this is an eight, in eight inch cake round. This is made, this is for making cakes. This is a loaf pan. Why is this important? This is for ba baking banana bread. This is for baking quick breads. This is for baking loaves of bread. Very important for you to know what this is. As a chef, I use this for terrines, right? When I wanted to make terrines or presse of, you know, any type of force meat, anything along those lines. This is a tart shell. So basically a tart shell is for making pies and tarts, but I didn't know this. And I think this is important for the beginner. I love this tart shell because the insert comes out. So it makes it really easy to remove the tart and also for cleaning, right? But I'll be honest, sometimes this piece gets lost in a, in a professional kitchen. They make them all shapes and sizes. I love these ones for single portions and a higher up Michelin level dining. This is more ideal, but I also wanna talk about the straight edge. So they make these type of tart rings, which are actually very useful. And the reason I say they're useful is because they have perforated holes in them and they're also way cheaper, right? So you can make tarts that are straight. So basically the way you do it is you put the, you make the round tart shell, put it down, and then you cut a strip and then you put the strip around here. But what's great about this, because of the perforated holes, you get crispy edges all the way around, right? Where if you use a regular tart shell, sometimes you get some blonde spots. Next, we're gonna talk about general kitchen. This is actually called a hotel pan, also known as a 200 pan. They also make a half 200 pan, right? Now there's different sizes. The next size up would be a 400 pan, okay? So yes, it is way thicker. Okay, as you can see, you know, 200 pan, 400 pan, and then the next step up would be a 600 pan. These are highly used in restaurants, okay, especially for food storage, especially for cooling down large quantities of food, transferring food, also for food storage. So these are highly used in a restaurant scenario. Very important to know. There is also smaller pans. They have ninth pans. They also have sixth pans and third pans. So basically think about this. A third pan will fit a third of this. A ninth pan fits a ninth of this. A sixth pan fits a sixth of the 200 pan or 400 pan or 600 pan. If you want me to go more into depth about that, then just let me know in the comments, we'll do it. So if you see here, the 400 pan is obviously thicker than the 200 pan. So keep that in mind. This is probably one of the most important things. This is called a half sheet pan. Now don't mind, it's kind of messy, but it's totally fine. Very frequently used in restaurants and they also have a full size sheet pan. This is commonly used for roasting things, also food storage, a lot of things for station prep, mise en place. There's so many things that the half sheet pan and also the full sheet pan is used for. They also make a quarter sheet pan, which is half this size, obviously. This is an honorable mention here. This is actually a terrine mold. It's used to make foie gras terrine, pate de champagne. There's like so many things you can use this for. It's really cool. I actually have baked bread in here before. I've used it to serve in. I mean, this thing is amazing, but yeah, this is a terrine mold. Another honorable mention, this is also another mold, but primarily used for pastries. They make a bunch of shapes, different sizes of this type of mold. Now, again, this is primarily used for pastry, but you can use it for savory. And there's also a plastic sheet that, that you can use for this. It's called acetate. And that way you can create like Un, it won't stick to the actual stainless steel. So if you made it this far, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And listen, I know this is a basic, basic as basic Betty gets, right? But I think it's really important for me to explain this to the young cook, right? Who's just stepping a foot in the kitchen. So if you know somebody that's getting into cooking, or if you know somebody that is an avid chef, home cook, or needs to hone up their skills, send them my channel, send them my way, because I am giving all this knowledge away for free. It's very important to me as a chef, right? To be able to nurture that next level of chef and make sure they have a fruitful career. My first three to four years in my profession, I learned so many bad techniques from being a short order cook. I didn't know what proper equipment was right and wrong. I didn't know the difference between a blender and a hand blender. I didn't know what a, you know, a certain machine was. I didn't know what a saute pan in is and a sautois is. And what's really important is 
You don't want to be embarrassed when you step foot into a professional kitchen and the chef looks at you and says, hey, go grab me a half sheet pan. And you have no idea what he's talking about. And you have to swallow your pride and go ask another cook what a half sheet pan is. Yeah, that was me. Hello. Yeah, that was me in the beginning because nobody wanted to take the time and show me the proper equipment because it's supposed to be common sense, right? In the professional kitchen. So for that new person, this one's for you. This video is for you. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And again, I I missed quite a bit of equipment. This is a basic rundown of certain equipment that I think is imperative that you use, right? The things I didn't mention were like the Bain Marie, the double boiler. There's so many things that I wanna talk about, but we need to start somewhere and build on that. Remember, we're building a foundation of culinary knowledge first, then we move into advanced technique. I can't wait until we start cooking. It's gonna be amazing. Make sure you hit those post notifications. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? All this free knowledge? I'm telling you, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next episode.